Hello everyone, and let's talk about Ruby. Now, I previously did a Volume 3 review way back when, and it kind of sucks. But you guys could check it out on my video playlist, somewhere around here somewhere. Um, uh, for, for Volume 4, I decided this time around to do the whole episode by episode thing, but to add a little bit of spin on it, I decided to talk about the highlights of Episode 1, the next step. So, let's begin. Uh, first, we also had to talk about Salem and her until I get the official name for this group. I'm calling them the Elite Four. Um, let's start with Dr. White. Now he comes off as the, um, I believe the, the scientist or mad scientist, depending on which direction you guys want to go with. Um, as he basically probably teams up with Salem to explore his research on um, probably on the creatures of Grimm and darkness in general. Next, Hazel. Now. Not much we can get off of Hazel. He seems like more like a, the calm and collected, strong type. Uh, he probably focused more on getting the job done than rather than brag about it, like Dr. White. Uh, next, we want to talk about Tyrion, the murdering psychopath of the series, as he reminds me a lot of Marvel's Carnage. It seems like he's only in it for the cause. His ability, his interest in killing people, and. It looks like he was kind of disappointed when Salem uh, said that to go after Ruby, but to bring him back alive, which was a slight disappointment. Uh, next, we obviously got to talk about Cinder. And man, did Ruby after her up good. Well, serves her right considering since what she did to Pira. So, call this divine justice. But she seems very damaged and weakened. And I'm assuming that she'll definitely want payback as we get further down the volume. Next, I want to talk about um, Team Ranger, or Team Junior, as they're still debating what they would call themselves. Um, the chemistry is still good. Uh, you know, John's still the comic relief. I was hoping that we get to see him at least uh, come up a different person from what happened after the events of Volume 3, but it seems like we still got a long way to go, which, is, to me, I think it's kind of becoming a little bit annoying. I would like to see him actually prog progress because he used to be the secondary side character to this series and we've already got little well, little tidbits of here and there on how they see his progression as Pyrrha trains him to become a better fighter. And I'm hoping in this volume we'll finally get to see his semblance eventually. Uh, Ren is Ren as they give him a bit more, I would say, more dialogue this time around. Uh, as you know, Nora's still Nora, and Ruby, despite uh, what people have been uh, theorizing about her in this, what's going to happen in Volume 4, like her suffering from PSD, but uh, thank God they didn't went that route, because the character has, has started out with a strong resolve from the beginning. She actually knows what she wants to do, unlike her teammates. As you know, that uh, none of them don't really show what how they fit in, or if this is the right correct path for them. But Ruby has direct line of sight, and I think she will continue to get stronger and better as we get further in this volume. Next, I want to talk about the newest creature of Grimm, the Geist. I think it's called. Uh, this is to me a very big highlight in my eyes because. As from all the creatures of Grimm that we've seen so far, they've all been based on animals, like the Beowulf, a wolf, uh, the Ursaring, a uh, bear, and the Nevermore, a raven. We've even seen some griffins and chimeras, or all, all sorts of things, even that gorilla later down the line. Uh, it seems like um, the guys are able to possess intimate objects, but not these which confirm they're able to possess humans or whatnot. But to me, I think this would probably make a good uh, potential uh, boss fight or sub boss fight, uh, possibly a sequel to uh, the Ruby video game later on the line, as they probably make it more like close to the veins of Devil May Cry or Final Fantasy. Next, next highlight for me was um, John's new armor. I love that he decided to incorporate the um, parts of what was left of Pira. It's a nice way to remember her. And that telling one that even though she's gone, she's still part of 
of John, Ren, and Ruby's heart. So that was a great highlight. Uh, the last highlight I want to talk about is obviously the new art style and animation for this thing. It looks phenomenal in my eyes. Uh, I still haven't been find out if they're still using Poser. I know Poser is an uh, animation software, software, and Maya is a 3D modeling software, and it could go hand in hand. Uh, I dabbled it mostly. In, uh, I had some experience in Blender, Blender, but very little, and I still suck. But uh, I've been curious if any of you guys know why exactly they're still using that, or they're using Maya, or are they using something brand new? Uh, I'd be really interested to know what program they're using. Uh, 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 animation was still there. I think um, you could tell that Monty is still very much mi missed from uh, from the current volumes. Uh, we're missing that whole. Basically, if you study his his fighting animation, it basically resembles that of uh, the fighting game animation where everything's like fast, quick slashes and all that. And so far we haven't got that with the director. I think Carrie is his name. So I like the episode. I thought it was a great start for the for the season. So and I can't wait to see the next episode. And hopefully as we know the next one will be about Weiss and we'll finally get to see what's really her relationship with her father really is as he comes off as kind of a jerk. So, until then, thanks for watching. Bye.